Well, it looks like um, it's 12.01, we can begin. I um, appreciate having everyone here today. Uh, I think most of you have been in our previous sessions and so introducing uh, Stephanie and, and Evelyn will present. Welcome back everyone. Um, for those of you who have not joined us before, hopefully some of this um, will make sense and I'm trying to tie it back to a lot of the different things we've talked about so far too. So. Hopefully it'll help review wise, but also um, help make sense if you're just joining us for the first time. So glad to have you. Uh, so today, um, just you know, given all the uncertainty um, just out there in the world right now, uh, we've been going over different uh, facets that are associated with building a resilient, um, resilient toolbox, uh, resiliency skills, and going over how we can help adopt those and implement those uh, with kids within the classroom, and then. Most, most importantly for ourselves and our own families too. Um, so today's topic is hope. Um, and hope is a really neat facet because it can really uh, tie into a lot of different um, facets that we've already learned about too. I just wanna extend a warm welcome as well. Um, I think it's perfect timing to be talking about hope today. As we're looking into the new year, it's always a nice kind of um, reassessment and then looking forward to goals in the new year, which hope is, is so connected to our goals. Just wanna start things off with, um, really appreciate the families and communities and our partners uh, with, the, with our different projects, and especially you all for being here today. So when we talk about resilience, um, one way to think of it is, or how some people know of it is through uh, Dr. Duckworth's uh, research on grit. And so grit, um, or resilience, right? Your ability to bounce back from things really just refers to living a life like a marathon, not a sprint, right? You're in it for the long haul. How can we achieve goals or look towards the future um, and not let the little things, um, not let road, roadblocks become insurmountable barriers. And so I know it might look kind of small on your screen, but um, these are the 10 facets of resilience that we've been going over together. Um, so we started off with the ability to self calm around the 12 o'clock hour and um, we we're working our way through. So right now we're, we are on hope right now. Um, we haven't gone over optimism yet, but today's going to be dedicated towards hope. Um, there's lots of different ways to define hope, but we usually just refer to hope as your willpower, um, meaning like you might have higher goals or values that you're moving towards, way power, your ability to achieve these goals and also follow through, meaning um, you know, like how do you get from point A to B? In terms of why um, resilience is important in schools, that you know, having that ability to bounce back from things or that grit uh, and teaching that to, whether it be kids in our own family or children that we work with, um, that having that growth mindset can really help kiddos, especially in us, embrace challenges persist um, when these roadblocks come up or barriers uh, step in our way. Um, you know, learn to see these setbacks more as a way to learn and a challenge to be creative about uh, different problem solving abilities. Uh, and also to define, you know, inspiration from other people's ability to move past those different roadblocks. Well, there's lots of studies out there, resilience or grit is um, uh, just defined in a multitude of different ways. And overall, having that growth mindset really does, it's linked to better scholastic achievement, uh, linked to better life satisfaction, and also just a decrease overall in mental health concerns for both kids and adults. So um, other ways that resilience comes up in more of the school format, I know we've gone over this before, but um, you know, teaching that ability to bounce back from things, those, those kind of like those real world problem solving skills uh, to kiddos is really important. Um, in some school districts, that social emotional curriculum actually ties in a lot of the resilience skills that we're talking about, um, particularly hope, um, and also just having those positive classroom behavioral supports. And so we'll also, we, we want to hear from you all too throughout the stuff. So please feel free to interrupt us at, you know, add information in the chat, uh, hearing about how you've been able to um, implement some of the different facets or tools that we've um, talked about over the past couple months, uh, or any suggestions that you all might have in terms of how to deal with these things real time with kiddos, and especially in 
uh, also a virtual or a hybrid platform. So in terms of why we talk about resilience or just, you know, you all are resilient individuals. You're all here, uh, took resilience and grit and the ability to bounce back from things to get to this position in, in your lives. And um, if you think about, uh, you know, just, I know for me, when my cell phone battery, if I'm playing video games on my phone, it starts that, it warns me that about that 20% mark about how it needs to be charged. I know my priority becomes that phone's charge. It's my source of communications, my source of entertainment, right? It does a lot of things. Um, if you think about, you know, in terms of self-care, right? We all have our own batteries. And so we need to also make sure, just keep it in our minds somewhere that we have to prioritize our own batteries and find that way to recharge. And, um, you know, without having that ability to recharge or just different things that we find uh, replenishing that we can, like our, our ability to bounce back from things can really, um, you know, not be as efficient as it could have been. And so definitely, I think this, slide just really hammers home that, you know, self-care is a priority and not a luxury that we need to, you, know, you can't pour from a empty glass, right? We, we need to make sure we're recharging our own batteries. I think this one right now, many of us are having a challenge to, you know, hit a hundred percent max full. <laughs> um, so just even giving yourself some grace around, you know, let's try to get from the red to the yellow where, um, it's it's slowly rebuilding that charge. Um, and I think that's what we'll hear about some with hope today. So in the chat box, so thinking about all the different self-care or self-replenishment skills that we've talked about, um, how how has that gone? Have you been able to try them at least one time, try them more than once, didn't have time to try them at all? or didn't try them and don't really plan to. So just curious to hear about your experience. And if you wanna add if anything in particular was helpful, we definitely wanna know what that was, if you don't mind sharing. So, so far, it looks like most people have either tried them more than once or tried them at least one time. I just want to point out, too, the fact that you're all here, you're taking time for yourselves. That's something to definitely think about and be proud of. Hey, well, glad to hear that you all at least had, had the, the time to try them at least one time or more than once. So to start things off, um, just thinking about hope. So a little bit of a self, just, you know, questions to ask yourself or just more of a self-reflection. So think about how do you like to set goals? Are you someone who plans it out on paper? Are you someone who just kind of just rolls with it, sees what happens? Um, when things do not go as planned, what helps you stay flexible? Um, what keeps you you know, moving forward and bouncing back from things versus taking more of that doom and gloom uh, mentality sometimes. So think about, yeah, how do you set goals and when things don't go as planned, what helps you stay flexible in that moment? So hope, what is hope? You know, we hear a lot about hope. Well, hope is, defined as having the capacity for your ability to set goals, coming up with smaller action steps or pathways to reach those goals and follow through. So staying flexible when things do not go as planned. So um, kind of the main, the main components of hope are what we call willpower, so goal setting, way power, coming up with how you're gonna get there, right? Coming up with that way and follow through, staying flexible. Um, so hope is kind of made up of those three components. Some, you may have also heard of way power as more of like uh, skill power, right? So how do you come up with those, those ways to get from A to B? And so hope is, and there's a lot, lots of text on this slide, but hope is the backbone of optimism. 
And so um, it's not just enough to believe that things are gonna get better, that things are gonna improve. Uh, in order to have hope or even be optimistic about outcomes, you have to be able to see yourself improve, right? See yourself take that action and make movement towards making that difference. And so um, Dr. Snyder actually at the University of Kansas, he was a, he was a pioneer in the field of positive psychology, um, especially with his theory of hope, which has that uh, the willpower, way power and that follow through component. And so he really, um, really was kind of at the forefront of that idea that you know, in order to have hope, you have to have this goal directed thinking and have motivation in order to achieve a specific goal. Um, and you know, in terms of what motivates us, right? That sometimes we make stories up where we kind of have excuses and we are able to forgive. And that really helps us as people move forward and pass negative experiences, right? Instead of getting stuck in all the things that I could have, should have, would have done. And so that, so really being able to kind of see yourself in this future oriented position, right? Be able to move towards this directed goal and to really be able to bounce back or come up with ways that you can disconnect from maybe roadblocks and move past those are all really important in terms of um, connecting to this, this concept of hope and also just future oriented uh, direction. I appreciate you brought up Dr. Snyder, uh, Stephanie. Um, he really developed this model for folks who had uh, chronic illness and really had some uh, li life limiting um, uh, challenges to reach goals. So one thing I always took from him is, you know, the, the goals can be um, mindset as well as actual, you know, going from point A to point B and uh, just that ability to think, um, you know, e even if it, if in that his situation, if it was some, um, physical limitations that made previous activities challenging, you know, really looking at, well, what, what other pathways are there? Um, I think when we work with kids, you know, this can really boil down to some really uh, concrete kind of more um, kind of in the moment kinds of willpower and, and uh, way power. Um, I, I'll use an example that I think resonates with kids. Um, you, you know, um, I'll use a sports example because again, <laughs> a lot of kids like sports. So um, things like the, the Chiefs winning the game when Patrick Mahomes got hurt, you know, you have one vision going into a game and then you have to kind of think and be creative when that one pathway doesn't does not work. I know that seems like a small and, and not as important example as many of the challenges we're facing, but just kind of that idea, we can boil it down to those kinds of things as we're, we're talking with patients and students. I think it's a great example. So one of the HOPE activities, which um, you know, we do with adults and could also be helpful with kids too, of course, just maybe presented slightly differently, but there's this HOPE handprint. So where, say if you, you know, traced, you know, kind of like doing your Thanksgiving turkey, almost kind of handprint trace there, if your thumb is your way power, and then you have all these different action steps as your fingers, sorry, you can't see my hand. Um, and then in the center of your palm is your, your actual goal, that willpower. So um, this can also be a nice visual way in terms of say if the goals in the palm of your hand, um, you know, what is this action step that you can take? And then what are these different pathways that can get you there, right? And I think it's a nice visual representation that it's not just one pathway, right? One digit that's gonna get you there. There's all these different pathways that can get you there. So I think it's just a nice, nice visual to remember, re remind ourselves that's not just this, you know, three-way triangle thing of way, way, uh, willpower, way power, and follow through. That there's lots of different ways to get there, just in case something happens or something gets in the way of one of those, um, one of those action steps. In terms of bringing hope into the classroom, there's lots of things that we're probably already doing that um, is probably setting. Uh, our kiddos up for thinking, you know, in, 
thinking with the ability to bounce back from things or to still be able to feel like you're move, making positive progress towards something. Um, so definitely uh, using more of a project-based learning, right? How, you know, just, I know it's difficult right now in the virtual realm, but thinking about just back to when I was in school, just working on projects with different team members and hearing, you know, maybe you have a central goal of trying to solve a particular problem, or maybe it's more of an art project. And there's all, you know, each student there has a different way of thinking about things, a different way to get to the same goal. And so that kind of collaborative learning or exper experiential learning can be really helpful in terms of, you know, just learning that there's more than one way to get to the answer. Um, I think this, this second point is especially important now, given just all the uncertainty and just lots of negativity in the news, um, at least that has been there in the past year. And so, you know, just uh, even taking time to focus and, you know, just, just even acknowledge that, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on right now, but trying to still focus on, you know, what's, what's one positive current event that's still happening? Um, you know, it doesn't have to be a big overarching positive thing, but it could be like a small positive thing, like maybe a local um, school or a local organization was able to donate canned food, or um, maybe a student in your classroom had, you know, some kind of positive, positive event occur. Maybe that's something they could share with the class. Um, additionally, too, you know, in addition to either, you know, these project-based learning or trying to focus, you know, find the silver lining and some of the things going on right now, um, you know, sometimes it's helpful to focus on, you know, same age or other students who may have made a positive impact. That could be nationwide, it could be local, um, but helping, that can help students, I'm sure I already do this, but this, this can help students kind of visualize or see themselves in also a similar positive uh, role. Um, teaching kids through like the lens of improvement, right? So that again, just kind of taps right into that growth mindset. Um, Mindfulness can also be uh, a way to bring about hope. A lot, a lot of times, right, we might have different worries uh, coming into the classroom, worry about a, a particular project, worry about current events. And um, you can actually Google leaves on a stream. And um, what is that's a mindfulness practice of visualizing or walking someone through um, placing like your worry or something potentially negative or something that's not very helpful thought and put, placing it on a leaf or pretending you're writing it on a leaf and then watching that leaf in your mind's eye float down a stream and kind of just go on. So that can actually be helpful too in terms of there's lots of worry, lots of, um, you know, you notice that there's a lot of different roadblocks coming up and it's difficult to be flexible to still move towards a particular goal or mindset that that mindfulness can help be a, you know, like, like a helpful way of thinking or just visualizing of here's these problems or these worries and they can just literally float down a stream. I don't know, Elon, if you had anything else that you wanted to add to the list or experiences. Gosh, I, you know, I love your idea of, um, it's almost like a, a, a hope show and tell where, you know, it's like, what's one positive? I think um, we really, um, we, we see educators as naturals at doing some of that. I think that folks are do it every day and just don't even realize that they're, they're kind of helping with that positive, hopeful mindset. I guess I was just curious um, kind of to ask our audience to, you know, if there's ways that with the online learning and all being such a new environment, any creative ways folks have um, kind of brought hope into the classroom or having that time to kind of look at uh, positive pathways. Um, I, as folks may answer, I'll just say um, for my own kids who are teenagers, albeit, um, the, the school has really done uh, some good things about using the uh, kind of video to continue to bring some of the music and some of the, the um, positives that uh, kids really enjoy being involved with. So that's one re thing I've seen with my own kids' school and trying to keep up some of the, the positive and, and hope um, we had our um, 
we had a, a ceremony last night around kind of that kind of positive um, reminders of what lots of kids are doing. So that one was kind of on my mind. It's a great example too of, you know, just combating isolation, just given that we're all in our own little virtual islands right now. And I also provide the link um, to actually like a PDF of you know, examples for all these kind of topics. Um, but, you know, just other ways to help, you know, virtually or in the classroom uh, to, you know, just brainstorm too, you know, like for, like, how do kiddos um, define hope, right? That, you know, just, I think just hearing how other people, just the diversity in the definition of hope can be really important to talk about or to bring up. And, you know, even just, you know, through actions, right? Like what, what does it look like to have hope? How do you demonstrate hope? Um, I think it's, you know, it, it, like we all have hope and I think we're all doing this to a certain extent already, whether it be in classrooms or with other individuals that we work with, but just taking the time sometimes to help, you know, just to try to define it and how your actions might already align with hope can be helpful just in terms of highlighting what you're already doing. Um, and then also too, just even to ask or think about like, who are some people we know who show hope, right? What does that look like to us? How do we know they're showing hope or they seem more hopeful? Um, and then also too, within the classroom would be helpful to, you know, like read or discuss a story that really teaches about, teaches us lessons about hope. And definitely too, with the comments, um, you know, thank you for sharing that. I think spirituality or, you know, relationship with God, religiosity, that can all um, really help help align and uh, promote hope. Absolutely. All right, this is another activity that was online. Um, and so this is a Helen Keller quote, and it says, keep your face to the sun and you cannot see the shadow. It's what sunflowers do. If you think about it, right, that sunflowers, we are the sunflower state and sunflowers always grow in the direction of the sun. And even on the cloudy days, right, the, the sunflowers are still facing the sun. And so, you know, think about, I mean, I think it's, you know, just depending on the age group you're working with, you can, you know, even ask questions like, well, what does it mean to have a sunny personality or you're walking on the sunny side of the street? Um, you know, just thinking about, are there other times in those kids' lives where maybe it is, you know, cloudy or rainy outside or cold, but, you know, like, just like the sunflowers, right, we're still facing the sun. So, um, you know, how can we be like the sunflowers even when we're not having our happiest day or the, like a day when things are really going our way? So it can be a helpful visual to keep in mind. And then in terms of, let's see, oh, that's the same slide again. We'll ignore that one. Um, but so in terms of practicing hope, right, that even though hope is its own facet in that big facet wheel that we all look at at the beginning of each session, um, you know, hope really ties into a lot of these different skills that you've already learned or have been practicing. And so, for example, with, you know, name, th naming three good things that, you know, setting aside a few minutes to write down three good things that happened today, that's already helping you achieve that hope mindset, right? That you're focusing on, you know, of course, not being unrealistic, but focusing on more of the positives, like what things are going well, you know, despite all that's happening, are there still ways that I'm moving toward a specific goal or my willpower? Is there, you know, th things in my follow through that worked out, you know, because if you think about the hand again, maybe the first one didn't work out, but you still have three others that, you know, three other pathways that it could have worked for. So that can definitely be helpful just in terms of, um, helping think about and helping uh, kind of just write through or process, you know, despite all that's going on, you know, maybe you, you still were able to maintain some positive momentum towards a goal. In terms of daily affirmations, that can also help us, help set us up for thinking about more of that hope mindset. And so, um, right, so if we have a, a particular goal, maybe some barriers are going to come up that we're going to overcome because we're going to, you know, whether it be a mindset or actually physically making steps towards a specific goal that, right, we have to have this belief that we have to be able to see ourselves achieve this particular goal or move towards, make positive progress towards this goal. 
So, you know, having even like your positive self-talk of I am resourceful, that that really lends itself to promoting that, yes, if a barrier comes up, I could overcome it. Um, there are ways to get over these little speed bumps that might come, come in my way. Um, so definitely just, you know, having that daily affirmation of I am resourceful, I can do anything, I'm flexible. These are all things that still tap back into that hope mindset. And in terms of positive self-talk, like for little kiddos, um, this is actually, you can go online and print it off, but there's, you know, the negative self-talk, the shadow self, and the positive self-talk, the superhero self. So again, another activity that you can, um, you know, kind of walk kiddos through and think about, okay, like, you know, with the, with the positive self-talk or the superhero self, could they be able to achieve a goal? Like probably more, more often than the shadow self, because it sounds like the shadow self might not be able to move past some of these different roadblocks or speed bumps that get in the way. I think this one is great because it kind of expands kids across ages. Um, the, the whole idea of kind of, you know, the a cartoon or whatever character they they really love um you know sometimes it can help kind of to then say well what thought bubble would come out of that character's head or you know what what would they be thinking as as a way to really practice uh some of the positive self-thinking and self-talk i think you know i it it's um it's a it's not an easy skill and it's one we all practice um, all the way through our adulthood is, you know, how do we make sure we, we have some of those positive tapes and that we play some of those positive tapes. Um, so just, um, you know, finding fun ways to do that. Um, the, again, this one's a great example because you can kind of have um, kids kind of think of that um, uh, fun person they, you know, are excited about and, and trying to then kind of work that into self-talk practice. Yeah. I like the idea with the different characters or, you know, just think about different kind of role plays, different scripts um, that might, you know, fit with the story just to help help practice that type of perspective taking too. It can be super helpful. Um, and then just, you know, something to think about too for yourselves that, you know, it's, um, you know, how do you find the bright side, right? How do you keep facing towards the sun, even if the weather comes in or even it's cloud and cloudy and more gray out there just you know taking the time sometimes to reflect on how how we continue to move past specific roadblocks to get to a goal can be really helpful right because if the more we understand how we do things that can help us explain it to another person too or even just be able to share different examples because i feel like just whether it be you know other humans other kiddos um it's helpful just to have that example of you know like how you, know, you can bounce back from things too. And then just again, a reminder to remember to check in that you, know, you, you might not always be at the super full level of battery capacity, but just thinking about you know, how could you, you know, what, what could you do to try to you know, keep you out of this zone and maybe just keep it in the orange or the yellow. Um, maybe it's not always going to be up here and that's okay. Um, and then also just being able to recognize whether it be, um, you know, in particular with this facet of hope or whether it be in more of the self replenishment or just any other stressor that comes up, um, you know, finding ways to like your own alarm system in terms of knowing like when you need to plug back in and use some of the tools that you have um, in your toolbox already uh, to try to bring this level back up. I know when, when our batteries run down, it just makes everything a lot more difficult sometimes. And, you know, we are, we're in a, just a, a, a different kind of role, right? That, you know, in, being in that educator role, we model, there's a lot of adaptation for different age groups. Um, just even if these are things that you're going to bring home to your family too, right? There's just that kind of um, adaptabil adaptability again and so you all are super flexible people in your thinking and you, know, you definitely do all prioritize self-care because you're taking time for yourself right now um and so just you know i don't think we could emphasize enough that you all have a very difficult job but um you know definitely strengths are that you you are hopeful you are optimistic that you do have the ability to bounce back from things
So in the chat box, just thinking about hope in general, ways that we can adapt it for the classroom or with our, within our own families. Um, so if you're, you know, just we want you to be completely honest. So if you, um, you know, do you plan to try all these skills? Do you plan to try some at least once? You're not sure um, or you don't plan to. Well, it looks like the majority of you do, you know, that, that you are planning on trying some of these skills at least once. And, you know, for those of you who might not have enough time, that's, that's completely okay. These are all just tools to add to your toolbox. And when the timing's right, right, that you, you might have an extra tool in that toolbox that you can go to and try out. And again, just, you know, to Right now, it's a very, you know, it's just an uncertain and difficult time. Um, and so just, again, just wanted to remind you that there's lots of COVID-19 resources out there for children and families. We have them on our website available to you to check out. Um, and then additionally, there's also just some great phone apps, COVID Coach, uh, Virtual Hope Box, that can be extra, you know, just things to check out. The, um, the one you're showing, Stephanie, the helping children and families cope, it, it's uh, kind of like a, a, a online workbook. So it does have some handouts kind of to help um, if you're talking with kids about some of the positive self-talk that we reviewed today. Um, also just about even talking about feelings and um, expressing what's on the, the child's mind. So. Just uh, putting a plug in for that one. I know we ended a little bit early and just really thank you all for taking the time and being here today. Um, what questions can we help answer? Or are there any you know, suggestions or things that you found helpful that you would wanna share with the group? We definitely wanna hear, hear from you. Also, if you've heard anything from students that they're doing, I had a patient recently give me the site for joke of the day. <laughs> so just even small things like that, if you're hearing from students, we'd love to hear about that too. Yeah, I like the comment too um, from Roxy that, that it is just nice to have a set time where you know you're gonna check in or uh, just to be able to take that break because you do get sucked into that rat race. And yeah, definitely just even with the vaccines, right? That um, I, I think you're completely right, right? That a lot of times we just like we're focused on the task at hand or other things coming up and until a student voices something like, hey, I'm excited about the vaccine or right, there, there's some kind of hope associated with it that, um, yeah, it's like we don't really necessarily, you know, maybe appreciate the full impact that this has on students and families. Well, I think uh, Steph and I wanted to just emphasize, you know, we're, we'd love to see you next month, but if you have um, ideas or, or we can support you with any of these resources, 
between now and our next session, we, we again, just extend, we, we always love to hear from you. Just wanted to remind everyone that videos from the previous sessions are on the website along with the PowerPoints. So uh, please uh, feel free to go out and, and get those and share those as, uh, along with um, videos and PowerPoints from uh, our other echoes, the behavior echo that we had last fall and, and uh, going back uh, quite some time. So we'll go investigate our website as well, telehealthrocks.org.